I lost my word. It's like I'm on Laura Tab again, but I'm not. You're cutting down a lot of the forest, a lot of the flowers, a lot of you know, things like this that the bees thrive on. And you know, without trees and things like that, you're cutting down on a huge majority of the bee population, number mm-hmm. one. On top of that, there's a whole bunch of people, so there's a whole bunch of pop- uh, blah, blah, pollution. Yeah, so... They can't know. breathe. So, you know, in a way, it's probably good that they're doing that, but, you know... You know, is saving the bees actually going to really do much? Well, I mean, it's said in theory um, that, like, if you were to travel back in time and kill a mosquito, you would kill off an entire civilization. So, I mean, they are important. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Oh, well, well, we'll sit back and we'll wait and we'll see what happens. And if I am right and it's all about the swimming pools, then maybe people need to just step up and pay their goddamn taxes. Yes. Hmm. Okay. Uh, last one for me. And it's about koalas. <laughs> <laughs> How the hell did this happen? Okay. Anyway. <laughs> koalas being trampled to death by cows. Yes, cows don't need guns. Okay, this is also from November 16. Koalas are being trampled to death by killer cows. The iconic native animal which lives in trees are being killed or injured when territorial cows with calves are heel... Oh, when calves are at heel. Act in concert to circle and trample them when they go to ground to change trees. Wildlife experts in the southern state of Victoria said while it sounded bizarre, the killer instinct in cows was a common knowledge among farmers and wildlife carers. I've had a joey, a baby koala, come in after being found sitting on the back of a cow, said Colleen Wood, who runs the Southern Ash Wildlife Shelter. Its mother had been killed on the ground and the joey had climbed up the closest thing to her body, which happened to be one of the killer cows. Wood said that even a large male koala weighing 30 pounds or 14 kilograms could not survive being run down by a fully grown cow. I've seen them with every rib broken, with head injuries, with every organ ruptured, Wood said. One cow will see a koala and call the others over and they'll trample and butt it. The poor koala has got nowhere to go and stands there stranded and takes it. They don't have a strong fight or flight instinct, whereas wallabies or roos, as in kangaroos, or wombats would make a run for it. Wildlife Victoria's Amy Amato uh, urges farmers to investigate if their cows are bellowing and intervene. Mm. So, you know... That or maybe the farmers need to get out there and paint their cows with blue paint and then the cows can run along and go, You can take my freedom! (laughs) (laughs) Well, you know. That's going on a (laughs) soundbite. No! Oh my god, I cannot believe that just... (laughs) What's the first image I get? Because, you know, they're like bellowing and carrying on and all the other cows are coming over to see what the hell's going on and they're like, ooh, it's a koala, ooh, let's kill it. (laughs) Come on, Junior, I'll teach you how to kill this one. Poor koalas. Oh, oh my god. This show just became even more epic than it was before. You know, this is a very sad story. (laughs) (laughs) On account of all the laughing. (laughs) It's a sad story, but let's shut up. (laughs) Well, I'm thinking, you know, the poor koalas just coming down the tree to, like, change trees. And the cows are in, like, killer cow mode. And they're coming along and they're humming the song. And, you know, so... Yeah, anyway. 
<laughs> I have a better idea. Mm hmm. If we put all the cows in, like, all black, cover up, like, nothing but, or co- cover up everything but their eyes, then they'd be ninja cows. Ninja killer cows. Yes! Mm, do they get throwing stars? Yes. <laughs> Maybe they'll climb the trees to get the koalas and save a bit of time. That's actually what I thought the story was going to say when you <laughs> when I first saw it. Yeah, it's not like that moose from like months ago that climbed an apple tree. <laughs> See, he sh- she should have been a ninja moose. <laughs> but oh. what I was going to say, Belinda, was because this is such a sad story, I believe that it is your duty as an Australian to pay some sort of tribute to um, the fallen koalas. And I think you should do that by doing the mating call. No, because then you'll just remix it again. Oh my goodness. <laughs> well, if I'd known that story was going to be that funny, I mean, sad, I would have told you to line that up before. No. <laughs> How about you do a killer cow call? Moo! <laughs> now remix that. <laughs> okay. Except unless it's a ninja cow. And then you know what a ninja cow would say? What would a ninja cow say? Nothing. They're ninjas. <laughs> I thought it would, like, say stuff and then, like, the lip sync would be out of sync. (laughs) I was going to try that, but then I realized, oh, yeah, this is the radio. You can't see me. (laughs) Yeah, bad kung fu. Bad kung fu. Kung fu cow. (laughs) Okay, so we're coming up to the top of the hour and all the people are sitting there scratching their heads saying, the hell are they on? And we're not really on anything, which makes it even more scary. Well, actually, you know, in a way, I kind of am, because today has been, well, Wednesday, which is not relevant to Friday much. Except anyway, (laughs) it's hump day uh, without the hump. Yeah, no humping. (laughs) You get frowned. You you get frowned upon if you hump people randomly. Not that Walmart. restraining order and all. <laughs> yeah, you need to go to Walmart. No, no, I don't. <laughs> no. People will hump you back. Not necessarily. And have you seen the people of Walmart? I'm not sure I want any of them to hump me back, honestly. It could be an experience. But what I was going to say mm-hmm. was today has been a crap day. So, you know, this is just fun, and I'm fine, yeah, it, I don't have a child wandering around screaming at me all day. And eating crowns. No. Luckily, I didn't have to worry about that today, because she tried to eat a marker. Oh, lovely. Yes. Feed her some tinsel, that should, you know, spice things up a little. <laughs> you know, noms for now, sparkly crap for later. <laughs> oh my god, you gave birth to Edward! <laughs> oh yeah, that started oh, wait, at midnight no, last night. You just shat him out. <laughs> and the difference is... Good point. <laughs> well, I guess he's a little more tan. <laughs> <laughs> Unless she ate the blue crayon and then he's a little pale. <laughs> Crappy complexion. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> and on that Please bombshell. Please enjoy afternoon snack, everyone. <laughs> and on that bombshell. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. We'll see you all next week. Bye. Bye. And this has been the Friday Catch Up, powered by the Paraquest Radio Network. Remember to catch The Hostess with No Ghostess every Friday, 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on the ParaQuest Radio Network.
You can take my freedom! <laughs>